Dinner for Shoes, please. Welcome to Dinner for Shoes, episode two, where I have a really good conversation in a really great outfit and eat really good food. Um, This week's episode is called Fiore's and Fashion Week. Um, Fiore's is an Italian deli in Hoboken. We will get into that. Fashion Week is, well, you've probably heard of it if you're watching this and you're like interested in it. Um, There's a reason why I'm wearing this outfit. It's related to Fashion Week. Let's start there. Um, My shoe today is a Manzer Gabriel flat. They are known for this ballerina flat. They do it better than any other brand, and that's never going to change. It's comfortable. Like, you try it on, and you see for yourself why it's just the best fucking shoe out there. Um, I'm wearing them today, and they are part of my Fashion Week outfit, along with this Marc Jacobs bag and these Miu Miu Quiet Luxury sunglasses that are also kind of futuristic and matrixy, but I just love them so much. And they don't even look good on me, but I I love them. Like, I don't have a sunglasses face, which means we could do a whole episode on that. But I don't know. I just, there's something about them. And um, so I'm wearing those. Those are my black accessories, which is how I quiet luxurize myself. I always um, aim to like add a little bit of black to my outfit when in doubt. And then in the middle, we've got... Um, some separates from Aritzia. Uh, this is a satin bustier. It's very comfortable. And a cool maxi skirt that's very like bohemian, very airy, very comfortable. I love it. I love this outfit. It's comfortable, which is what you want to prioritize during fashion week. Um, and then gold jewelry from Astrid and Mew. Uh, I've got, it's kind of like this like cool, like etched gold, um, And it's a matching set. So there's like a little emerald gemstone, both on the ring and then on each hoop earring, which I love. Um, We will get into the food, but let's talk about why this outfit. Why this outfit? So I always, when I'm like approaching Fashion Week, which comes, by the way, twice a year, once in September and once in February, um, it's kind of like if you work in the fashion industry, like the back to school for a fashion editor. Um, and everyone else who goes to the shows. But in my job, I've always thought of it as like back to school. The summer's over, fashion week is coming, and you have to like just start working. (laughs) Seriously. Basically every week when I approach it, I think like, okay, how do I want to dress for this fashion week? Because part of going to the shows is like dressing in a really cool outfit and showing it off to a point. I mean, a lot of people really love showing off their outfits, which is called like peacocking in front of shows. All the photographers take pictures of the models walking into a show or the editors or the celebrities, and it all makes for great street style. Um, But not everyone likes to peacock, yet you still want to feel fashionable and put together when you go to a fashion show. It's just like this like feeling. It's almost like when you're running a race and you have all the adrenaline coming from like the people cheering you on on the sides, that's what like going to fashion because like you just feel like you should be dressed up. It's about clothes. Like why not? So I think about what I want to wear and I just, I'm, I'm guilty of loving the Sophia Richie quiet luxury trend, which is a trend that I never thought that I would like because I'm like usually very uh, eccentric dresser. Um, I like to add a lot of like weird, quirky things, even something like simple as like wearing two earrings in this ear and like they're mismatched. So quiet luxury being like this like streamlined, like tailored basics, you know, very simple, valuing luxury items, like things that don't have logos flashing, Um, A lot of neutrals, like a lot of black. It's just not something I ever would have seen myself being into. But I'm into it because Sophia Richie does it so damn good. And I know like all of TikTok knows that. So I created a Pinterest board and it literally has nine pins on it. I could have like really gone to town on it and I just kind of fell off because that's what happens during Fashion Week. Like you get just like 
there's so many things thrown at you and you forget to like do things. So I started to create this board of like quiet luxury outfits that I really like. You'll see dark sunglasses, like my matrix sunglasses. This girl looks a lot better than me um, in them, but she makes it look good. A lot of gold jewelry, a lot of really simple belts. Again, no logos, uh, some really nice like cropped tailored trousers that also allow for a shoe moment, uh, beautiful breezy dresses, kind of like the skirt that I'm wearing. Uh, Sophia Richie on the beach on her honeymoon. Don't we all wish we could be there right now? And last but not least, that's Claudia Saluski in the basically same outfit that I'm wearing right now. And I, when I saw this outfit, I think I saw it on Instagram and I was just like, I need to recreate that outfit. For anyone who doesn't know, Claudia Saluski is a model and content creator, and she also happens to be dating, um, at the time of this recording, Phineas, who makes great music with Billie Eilish, his sister, and she just looks so fucking good in this, like, tiered bohemian skirt, plain simple flats. I actually think they're Mans or Gabrielle just based on the bow um, that I can see. A black bag, gold jewelry, her black sunglasses, and then like a really romantic shirt, which I went through a bunch. Now, I'm wearing this outfit again. Even though I wore this outfit for Fashion Week, I copied Claudia, I created it. I'm wearing it again because I don't get photographed often when people are peacocking around me at Fashion Week. It just doesn't happen. I'm, I don't know why. Like, and I'm not saying that in a way that's like everyone should take pictures of me. It's just sometimes like, People get photographed that are wearing crazy things, which I understand. And then other people get photographed when they're wearing really simple things. And maybe it's just that they're taller. They stand out from the crowd. I am really short. I don't know. No photographers ever take pictures of me. Um, the only time, literally, that I ever had a picture taken of me was outside after the coach show at like 4 p.m. And this is the picture. And... Um, this was this photo was on Getty, which is a photo agency, like probably the most popular photo agency in the world. And I look so fucking mad. <laughs> and I was I was tired and mad and it was day six of Fashion Week. So forgive me. But anyway, I you know, it was it was a moment and I was proud of myself for being on Getty. So, of course, I posted it on Instagram, even though I look like I'm constipated. <laughs> I posted it and um, I don't know, I, I wrote something along the lines of like, this is what happens when it's day six of fashion week and you have that like 4 p.m. slump sort of thing. Um, but anyway, so I did have to take photos of myself and my outfits because me and um, my director at work, we put together like a slideshow of all the outfits that we wore at Fashion Week. And there were outfits like the Claudia Saluski outfit that did not get photographed. Well, I was photographing myself on this camera, self timer. I drove my car all, all around different spots in Jersey City and I just got out of the car and I took pictures of myself. The worst one that I took was absolutely me in this outfit down by the train tracks the light rail or the path I think it's the light rail and anyway I just look also again constipated and I I look horrible so I didn't do this outfit enough justice so now I'm doing it justice and I'm re-wearing it and this is why so now let's dive into furies now here's the thing about furies um I love trying out all the Italian delis in Hoboken and Jersey City I love Cangiano specifically, which is like right near where I live. Um, and Fiore's is near my boyfriend's. And he like raves about them and says that they're so good and we need to try them. Well, I do always pass by it and I'm like, okay, this actually does look really good. So we walked in today and, you know, Fiore's and Fashion Week, it flows. They both begin with F, whatever. So I walk in and I'm like, do you have tuna? Because tuna is my absolute favorite. And he was like, tuna, we have tuna cans. And I was like, oof, this place is going to suck. <laughs> like, what do you mean you don't have tuna? And he was like, well, we have our special sandwich and that's it. And then like we can kind of like make variations of that sandwich. Like we have other things. But if you want the tuna special with tuna fish, you have to come on Friday. Well, it, it's Saturday. So I was like, OK. And he was just like, here, try try my mozzarella. And he like gave it to me. And I tried it. And I was like, holy shit. And then I was like, all right, points gained back. What is happening? This is delicious. 
And then, so the special sandwich on Saturday that my boyfriend got, it's roast beef. But I was like, I want like mozzarella cheese because it's so fucking good. And what other, like, can we do turkey instead of roast beef? Because I'm not a big roast beef person. And he was like, yeah, we could do turkey. Like I have turkey. And then he was like, or like chicken cutlet. And I was like, oh, like now we're talking. So he gave me a chicken cutlet with roasted red peppers, balsamic and oil and fresh mozzarella cheese. And I can't wait to try it. But before I do... I want to talk a little bit about how going into Furies somehow like meshed with the idea of fashion week for me. So I'm in there and he tells me they don't have tuna and you know, his like mentality when he was telling me this, like, you know, you got to get the special, like it's this or nothing was very much like you get what you get and you don't get upset. And fashion week is like that too. Like fashion week really sucks and we'll get into this. Like you're sweating, you're chafing, like you're, you just want to get out of there. You just want to get home. You're hungry. You forgot to eat lunch. Like all of this is happening. Like your boss is emailing you. You want to make sure you're on top of your shit. You know, you get what you get and you don't get upset. And so that reminded me of it. But then also um, I asked him when we were checking out, I was like, so the roast beef sandwich is the special on Saturdays. Like how many years has that been the special for? And he was like, literally 30 years. It's been the special for like about 30 years. And that also reminds me of Fashion Week because Fashion Week's like evolved over time, but it, how excited everyone is to go to Fashion Week and like, the camaraderie, the camaraderie, the camaraderie, what word is that? Okay. Um, that like around fashion week, it's there and you feel it once you're like sitting at a runway show without fail, no matter what. So some things never change, right? So that kind of is why like Furies ended up being the perfect meal for me to try surrounding fashion week. I did put Kit in the bathroom today because I just know that the smell of chicken is gonna make her nuts. This also is a half sandwich, a half. Like this is a huge fucking sandwich. All right. And I have Diet Coke because I, Nick and I love Diet Coke. Okay. Here are my thoughts about Furies. I didn't get a napkin. So the bread could be a bit better. It's not stale bread, but it's not like the best bread ever. And in my opinion, what makes a really good Italian deli is the bread. Also my sandwich. Now I have had it waiting in a bag and that's totally my fault but it's a little soggy and I didn't really get a good taste of the balsamic and oil, to be honest. I saw him putting it on and it looked like he was putting a lot on, but I'm telling you, like, I I don't really taste that much of it. The ingredients themselves are good. The chicken cutlet's good. The mozzarella cheese is obviously amazing. I'd recommend it to anyone. And the pepper is delicious too, but at the end of the day, it's not the best sandwich I've ever had. And honestly, that's how I feel about fashion weeks. At the end of each fashion week, it's not the best fashion week I've ever had. There is no best fashion week I've ever had. Um, but anyway, let's let's talk a little bit about fashion week through my lens and also just like the outfits that I wore. Um, I will like b- briefly say that um, there are certain pieces that I was really excited to wear. Um, this Louis Vuitton bum bag. Um, was awesome because I could go hands-free and wear it over the shoulder. I loved wearing it with this like ALC leather dress that had a cool little cutout. Um, This Acne Studios dress, it had a really high leg slit, which is huge for me. I normally don't go like that high with leg slits, but they're totally trending right now. So I wanted to make sure. Um, I also wore this uh, Christian Dior bag that I borrowed from Vivrel and it's kind of like ombre and it's got like a chain strap and that was really cool. Um, I liked it because it was like original and unique and honestly kind of spoke to like my normal sense of style, which is less quiet luxury. Um, I also really love these like flowy separates from Revolve. They're Enza Costa and oh my God, I never wanted to take them off. They felt like pajamas. I did have to spend a lot of time steaming at them. Um, this dress was probably my absolute favorite. Um, it's from and other stories and it's got like a floral print and a belt. It's strapless. I love a strapless silhouette. I wore it with my same matrix, (laughs) my matrix glasses and my denim branded Blackwood bag because I felt like the denim color, the shade of the denim like really went with the florals so well. And also these Sam Edelman, like cap toe slingbacks, um, 
you know, a, a shoe like that was added to my quiet luxury board. I definitely wanted a shoe like that. And Sam Edelman makes a great one. Um, there is a tiny little heel, but they are so comfortable that they literally feel like flats. This great bustier top with Reformation that was green with polka dot print. Um, it had pearls down the center and I wore it with my pearl bag, which was really cool. And Other Stories also makes a really, really good, I like literally talked about it on Instagram because I was so excited about them, but a really good trouser. It's linen and lightweight and I had it in like this tan color, but then also this like slightly darker brown almost color. Um, and I did have to steam those a lot as well, but they were the perfect trouser and I didn't have to tailor them at all, which for me, that always is an issue because I'm short. Um, and yeah, those were the things I was really excited to wear. Let's just discuss a little bit about leading up to the shows, going to the shows, and kind of like why maybe it wasn't the best fashion week ever, but it never really is. And like what I thought about basically just the environment in general this season. So first of all, going to the shows is easy. I live in Jersey City, so I hop on the path. Um, and then I can cab it or Uber or lift it around the city. Um, the shows, designers like to take their time slot on the schedule. I don't know if they're comparing it to like when other designers are showing and then maybe thinking like, oh, it would be really convenient to have everyone go from like this building to this building right across the street for the next show. But no, you have to go from like Guam all the way to Brooklyn, all the way back uptown to Central Park for a show. Like these designers have us going everywhere. But I think that kind of is the reason why the shows feel more special when you're actually at them because you're like, oh, I made it. I made it in time. All the shows without fail start 30 minutes late. So if you see a show that you're invited to and you're like, okay, like the show's at two. No, the show's at 2.30, just so you know. And um, there was one show this season that it literally said on the invitation, it was like, doors open 1.30, doors close at 1.50, and the show was at two. And I was so nervous because it was a show that I was really, really excited for, Tibby. It's actually my favorite runway show um, every season. I love it. Um, I just love the clothes at Tibby. Um, I think that from like a trend perspective, which we're actually going to get into in another episode when I talk about like what I saw on the runways and what the trends are for the new season and the looks I liked. From a trend perspective, Tibby just really sets the tone. It's like whatever trends you pinpoint as an editor, they were on the runway at Tibby in the coolest way, done in the coolest way. It's just, it's amazing. Um, so anyway, I was nervous that I wasn't going to make it to that show because it's like 1.50 and I'm in the cab. I'm like, the doors are closing. All right, that show also started at 2.30. So I just, without fail, add 30 minutes to whatever the time is. And that, you know, that bothers you, but you've also, like, as an editor, you've come to expect it. It adds to the, my jadedness feeling, if jadedness is a word. But I, yeah, um, I think that... That was no surprise. Something else that's no surprise and I think is the reason why I'm never going to have my best fashion week ever is just the lack of diversity on these runways. Um, through the years, I think designers have gotten better at being more inclusive when it comes to people's backgrounds, um, diversity. But I think that the body diversity is so lacking no matter what and you know, if you do your research, you'll see that designers, you know, for so many years, there was like this image of like a really skinny woman as like representing fashion and beauty. And we now know that like that is not what is con considered beautiful. It's not like what I consider beautiful. But designers, when they are designing their collection, they try to use as little fabric as possible. That is attributed to one of the reasons why they have this size zero model on the runway, right? But a designer like Christian Siriano, for example, and that's that was my first show of, of Fashion Week this season, and it's always one of my favorite shows to go to. It also happened to be his 15th anniversary, so I thought that was really cool. But a designer like him, he his runway is diverse. He had menswear on this runway. He had men walking the women's runway. You know, like it doesn't matter. Um, women's wear can be, 
something ready to wear in general can be something to everyone, like a different definition to everyone, but it should definitely, definitely be on real bodies in my opinion, because if these are clothes that we're actually going to wear or that we want to see ourselves in, like why not put it on real bodies so that we can actually see ourselves and imagine these clothes on us, right? Even if it is something that's like really fantastical that you might only wear to a wedding or that you may not really ever wear, you still want to like be able to experience fashion by like picturing yourself in it. Like that, that's like, that makes for the serotonin that like you get just from like being at those shows and being so happy to be around fashion if you're a really a lover of fashion. Anyway, Christian Siriano does a great job of that. It was his 15th anniversary, and um, I sat next to my director, Jess, who I love, and we had a good time at that show, and Sia actually performed in this crazy pink outfit that Christian designed for her. Um, I've designed Christian, I've designed Christian Siriano, no. I uh, interviewed Christian Siriano before, and he's amazing. He's a really, really cool person. I think he's really creative. I think he's really talented. Um, He's funny and he's really real. So it's just cool. Like my favorite part of every runway show, I should say this, just thinking about Christian Siriano specifically, but the clothes are great, right? Like we see the clothes, we get inspired. We love the music that comes with the show. So many editors are sitting there like shazamming the songs that are on the runway or whatever. Well, at the end of the show, the designer who created the whole collection comes out and takes a bow. Sometimes the designer like sprints, like some some designers are like, they're notorious for like doing a sprint down the whole runway and like running and like everyone's cheering. I love to see a designer like be proud of their art. And for some reason, Christian Siriano, just like you can tell how genuine his pride is for his art that he creates. And so I, I love going to that show for that reason. And So many people at the end of a show, it's like this show happens, right? Like it starts 30 minutes late and then the show in total maybe takes like 12, 15 minutes. And then the second that the last model walks during the finale, because the looks come out one by one by one, and then they all come out together at the very end as the finale and a different song will play and it'll be like kind of like a more of exciting song, you know, like wrapping up the show, setting the tone, whatever. Everyone gets up from their seats and it's like, all right, off to the next one or get me some coffee in this body or I need food or whatever. But you need to wait until the end so that the designer can take their bow because that's the whole person. That's the person whose ideas. I mean, obviously their team helped, you know, bring the whole thing together. But those ideas made this possible. You just enjoyed a piece of art, like watch this person take their bow, you know. So I that's just always been my favorite part. Um Happy end of fashion week. I'll be back to report on the trends after I see the shows that happen in London, which are happening now, Milan and Paris. Thank you for watching another episode of Dinner for Shoes. Hope you're enjoying it. Please like and subscribe and continue to tune in every Tuesday wherever you get your podcasts.